Welcome back to Fox 8 News in the Morning. I'm Stephanie Schaefer. So did you know this week is National Pollinator Week? So what species of plants help our bees locally? AJ Petiti joins us now with some tips and we're checking in also, hey there, on the Fox 8 Garden. It's great to see you, AJ. Hey, good morning, Steph. How are you? I'm okay. Um, hey, I'm even better now that I know it's National Pollinator Week. Right. <laughs> so we're here in the garden and things are looking spectacular. Um, it's really a testament because we haven't been out here, we haven't touched anything in probably about two weeks. And so, um, you know, having it really spaced out, having things well organized uh, really does a lot. There's a few things that you want to pay attention to. So one thing in particular, uh, the cucumber, things that are starting to run are starting to run. And so these guys in particular want to run. And so you want to just train them. You can either get them back in, they'll attach naturally back up to their cages or whatever frame you've got. But if they're starting to get on the ground, don't let them get too far because once they're too far, it's going to be really difficult to get them upright. And then the other thing that you really want to make sure that you pay attention to is, especially with the winter that we had was so mild, you're going to see a lot of fungus and bug issues uh, come through this summer, especially as we get into next week and the following week it's going to start getting really warm and really humid and so as that begins to come in you're going to start to see things either on the top of the leaves but especially check underneath the leaves we're starting to see a little bit of white fly on the cucumbers and on the tomatoes so it's really early on so that means it's really easy to start taking care of it but this is captain jack's it's an organic insecticide it works great on vegetables it'll take care of everything that you need but you really want to make sure that you stay the earlier you get on it the better off you're going to be if you wait until the thing's just covered and infested. You're gonna have a really tough time bringing it back. But if you start now and it's early on, you'll really be able to make sure that you are able to keep uh, the insects at bay, whether it's white fly, whether it's cucumber beetles, whatever they are. And then you wanna make sure that you're paying attention to the amount of water that's in the garden. So I'm walking around this morning, it's a little squishy. Um, that means there's too much water in the garden. So we're gonna have to back the watering down. But for the most part, everything is sitting in really, really, really good shape. And so, Onto the fun stuff. So this is pollinator week, which is a great thing. Um, you know, between bees and pollinators, it's really the cornerstone of our food source um, and the agricultural um, community and economy. So uh, looking at just some great plants that you can really put in um, to help encourage pollinators. And pollinators are all kinds. They're bees, they're honeybees, they're different um, ants, different all kinds of different species of uh, pollinators. But daisies are a wonderful one. They do great in bright sunlight and they bloom all summer long. They really perform really, really well in the garden. And it's a really sturdy, hardy perennial in our area. This is a Let's Dance rhythm, Rhythmic Blue Hydrangea. And these things bloom nonstop. The new hydrangea, especially the Macrophylla hydrangeas, are phenomenal. These things, we put them in the fields, we grow them in fields first. And literally, you can't get these things to stop blooming. So, and they bloom from early on in the season till late. So this is a wonderful, wonderful hydrangea. That's really good. One of the best ones, actually two of the best ones, um, this is Monarda. So this is actually called Bee Balm. Um, so it's got a really nice, it's in the mint family. So it's got a really nice, strong fragrance. Blooms all summer. You can see it's got a really beautiful flower to it. And they've been improving these varieties over the years. But this is a wonderful, wonderful pollinator. The one thing that you really want to make sure with these two varieties, they do attract them very strongly. So you may not want to put it right next to the patio, maybe put it off a little bit. And the other really great one, this is butterfly bush. And so there's big ones, little ones, and these things will be covered in flowers and you will never see anything attract hummingbirds and bees and pollinators quite like these guys and butterflies. So just wonderful plants to attract pollinators, but you definitely want to keep them a little bit away from the patio. That way you can enjoy the patio. Great, great information. Now, what was the last one with the little purple that's called the butterfly bush? Yeah, butterfly bush. And so there's some that are lo and behold that are about 18 inches and there's some that get six feet tall. Wow. So really a nice wide range and they're beautiful, covered in flowers. They're awesome. That is awesome. All right, thank you so much. And these are ones that will come up every year, year after year, right? Everything we talked about comes up year after year. Oh, just all so gorgeous. Yes, attract all those bees and hummingbirds and, and beautiful butterflies. Because we're all at home, so it's now important. we're all enjoying what we can see out there. AJ, it's good to see you. The garden's looking great. It's, it's looking wonderful. Good to see you, good. Steph. All right, take care. Thanks so much.